Hi, my name is Fernando Cardona. Um, today, I want to talk a little bit about what do you consider a good ASVAB score. So I've been doing this for about eight years, and uh, I've been helping a lot of people pass the test. If you haven't seen our Facebook page, you can go to our Facebook page. You can watch people, all the scores my student get. And that's why I am qualified to talk about this, because this isn't my job. This is my life. Anyways, so let's talk about what is a good ASVAB score. So many people talk about this, but they don't understand that it depends on the person. So what makes me a little mad is that somebody, sometimes a student might get a 40 AFQT, and then his friends tell him, oh, you should repeat, you should repeat. You don't know how hard the person studied to get that. You have no idea. What if he's already tried three times? Is he going to repeat just to please you? So it, it depends on the individual. It depends on how many attempts you've taken. So if you've taken it six times and you get a 38, it doesn't mean that it's a 38%. It means it's a 38 percentile. I have another video that explains that. Um, it's called AFQT Explained. If you write AFQT Explained, Fernando Cardona, you'll find the video. It's in the channel. You can look for it. I don't want to get into that, but it's not a percent. It's much higher than a 38%. But depending on how many attempts the person has taken, and it also depends on the job the person is looking for. It also might depend on how fast the person wants to join. If it's a person who doesn't have a job, Maybe, maybe if you get a 37, hey man, if you don't have a job and you really need to join, that might be enough. So a good score, it depends mainly on the person. That is the reality. That is the reality. Um, as I said, many people comment on, on this and they have no idea. They say, oh, you should repeat, you should repeat. Man, it all depends. You know, you, you, I hate when people say that kind of stuff. When I, I try to advise my students the best I can, and the only way we repeat is if you don't qualify for any job you like. If you qualify for a job you like, most likely you should join with the score you got. Now, in general, the AFQT is the score for you to join, is what we call the metric for you to join. Sometimes a person can get a 90 AFQT, but he won't qualify for all the jobs. Example, if a person scores 90 AFQT, but he scores very low in science, he scores super low in science, even though he scored a 90 AFQT, he can join, but he can't be any job related to science because he scored very, very low in science. If you score very low in the jobs areas and you score a 90 AFQT, you're probably going to go be assigned to administrative work, um, maybe human resources. Um, well, a 90 FQT probably also qualifies for officer candidate school and stuff like that. But the thing is, uh, I don't want to make this video too long. If you score a 90 FQT and you don't score high in science, you cannot apply to any science related jobs. Even though you scored a great score, a 90 is a great score. But if you score low in general science, you will not qualify for science jobs. So we're going to talk a little bit of what I consider a good score. As I said before, if you've taken the test multiple times and never passed the test, and a typo here, it's okay, and you finally pass another typo, a few typos, that's a good score for you. That's a good score for you. Sometimes you should take it and run. Also, some things that people don't, normally think about is that if you score, let's suppose a 40, and then with that you get a job you like, you could always repeat from inside the, the military. You could join with the 40, you can join with the 40, and you can repeat it from inside and you won't and you, you won't have many risks because you already have a 40 in the system. You already have your job secured. If you repeat from outside and you score lower well, then uh, the 40 will be annulled. Like, suppose you had a 40 and you repeat without joining the military and you get a 28. 
well then uh, that squad will be annulled, eliminated. You'll, you'll stay with a 28. But if you're in the military and you repeat and you get a 28 from inside the military, you're still inside. They won't kick you out. So uh, as far as I know. Um, also, anything above or equal to 58 QT is considered good. If you get a 58 QT, um, you'll be considered what they call alpha. Um, it, it's, it's pretty good. It's what we're aiming for. That should be what you're normally aiming for. Um, obviously, if you get more than 50 FQT, that would be much better. Um, and the ideal scenario is that also you do good in your uh, jobs, job-related fields, electronic, electronic information, auto and shop, mechanical comprehension. So that would be even better. The perfect scenario would be 50 FQT, 110 GT, and uh, high line scores. So that would be the perfect scenario. I made a little chart here. So here we're comparing uh, what I would call a few scores. So this is a passing score, a 35 AQT. Um, he, th this score, um, he should see what they offer and he should repeat depending on what they offer and the attempts. So if, if you've already taken it seven times, three times, five times, various times, you should consider joining with this if it's acceptable. Um, if they offer you only two jobs and you don't really like them, then you might consider repeating. Um, here he did pretty good in science. Anything above 50 in the, in the line scores is good. So he might qualify for a few science jobs. Electronic, not that good. Anything over 50 is good. Assembling objects, pretty good. And auto and shop, pretty good. So that would be a passing score that you could consider joining. So this is a good passing score with bad line scores. So this is obviously a little bit better than, than this other scenario, at least for me considering it. If he gets a 60 FQT, 108 GT, even though his line scores suck, because um, they really do suck, um, anything over 50 is good, 50 points. Again, that is not percentage. The 50 points, look at it as 35 being 50%. Does, does that make sense? And if you get 50 points, look at it like 68%. Just kind of looking at it that way. Anyway, in the line scores, if you get over 50 points, it is considered good. So this person can join. He did get a high six, a high FQT. Um, his GT is pretty good, but his, his job-related areas are not that great. He won't qualify for science jobs, for electronic jobs, but he can still join, and he has a pretty good AFQT. So this is what I'm saying. Even though this person got a 60, this person's ASVAB would be actually better because he has 50 FQT, but he qualifies for science, electronic, mechanical comprehension, auto and shop, and assembling objects. So this would be an ASVAB that I would never recommend anybody to repeat. Neither I wouldn't recommend anybody to repeat this one. These two ASVAB I wouldn't recommend to repeat from outside. After you join, you could consider repeating it but you shouldn't repeat it from outside, at least under my terms. So the perfect scenario, so again here, the 50 FQT is actually better than the 60 because of the line scores, because he got over 50 in all the job-related areas. And this would be the best possible outcome. So he got a 65 FQT, 110 GT, and in general science, electronic information, mechanical, in the job related areas, he has over 50 points. Just to make a point here, um, let me just make a point here. And uh, suppose he has 50. 35, 45, 28, 32. So which one would you think is better between the 65 and the 90? Even though people might be against me, every day of the year, every time, any way you look at it, the 65 is better. As long as you have the 110 GT and over 50 FQT, technically, even though this looks prettier, I know it looks prettier. This, this ASVAP is better, even though it looks prettier. I don't want to complicate it too much. The thing is that in this case, he has good in general science, but he didn't do good in electronics. He didn't do good in assembling objects. He didn't do good, do good in auto and shop. This person would qualify for more jobs. 
Yes, the other one got a 90, but this, uh, the person who got a 65 would qualify for more jobs. Hence, for me, for my, it's better. Anyways, but obviously, if you get a 90, you're going to be happy. If you get a 65, you're going to be happy. If you get a 50, you're going to be happy. Don't overcomplicate this. I'm just trying to let you know uh, what, what we consider good as that. And it also depends on the person and what he wants. Okay, so people overcomplicate things. You just should do the best you can. Just do the best you can. And whatever you score, see what they offer. See what they're offering. Before you decide to repeat, please see if they offer any job you like. Once you join, nobody will be asking what you scored. That, that's completely true. Nobody cares what you score. Once you, you join, it's not like you're going to have, he got an 80, the other one got a 60. The, people don't care. People don't really care. And very important, don't do pe- things for other people. Like, uh, I hate when I see people in Facebook uh, commenting on, on a person's score. Oh, man. Uh... Those line scores don't look really good, man. You should repeat. Dude, you don't know how hard that person had to study for that. Just say congrats, good job, and that's it, man. Please. Like, then people just want to repeat because to make the other person happy. And don't do things for other people. Do things for yourself and your family. If the if the best you can do is a 35 AVQT, then that's the best you could do. If you can get a good job with that, take it. Again, you could always repeat on the inside. I'm not saying that you should aim for a 35 AFKT. You should aim for the highest possible score. You're going to try to answer everything correctly. You're going to try to do the best you can. But I'm just trying to let you know that every person is different. Every person is different. Not every person is going to get a 90. Not every person is going to get a 70. You do the best you can and just try to see if you qualify for any job you like. So... Uh, if you go to the Facebook page, um, our Facebook page, let me see if I find it here. You can look at ASVAB scores and compare them. Um, what I what I mean by this is, I'm going to see, I hope the video isn't too long. I know the time limit in, in, in YouTube is 15 minutes. Hopefully it's not too long. And uh, so, so if you look at the what people scores, try and see if I don't. So this person got an 892. Can't zoom in too much to this one. Not really that good. Uh, zoom in. He got a 92. And this is what we call a great ASVAP because he got good score in general science 56. Um, math, no, uh, electronic information 74. Auto and shop 74. Mechanical comprehension 54. This guy qualifies for anything and everything. I think this this is a score that qualifies for anything and everything. So he got a 92. That's pretty nice. This other person got a 68. Um, general Science, 42. Electronic Information, very good. And Auto and Shop, very good. And Mechanical Comprehension, very good. And Assembling Object, very good. So his score is very good. He won't qualify for many science jobs. He got a 42. But he still got a great score. A 68, 116 GT, electronics high, auto and shop high, mechanical comprehension high. So it wasn't the perfect score because general science was a little low. It doesn't matter. He's going to qualify for a lot of jobs and he has 116 GT. To repeat this would be insane. What's the best scenario? You improve a little bit more on general science. What do you have to lose? You can lower electronics. You can lower auto. So it's not... Repeating this would be insane. But again, eh, just do the best you can and prepare yourself the best you can. It doesn't really matter because at the end of the day, you're just going to try to answer everything correct, right? But uh, don't let people tell you what is good for you. Whatever you get, be proud of what you get. If you worked hard for it, if you worked hard for it, you know, don't let anybody put you down. And don't make decisions just because people say you can do a better score or you should repeat. You only repeat if you don't qualify for any jobs you like and if you don't have a lot of attempts. If you have a lot of attempts, swallow a little bit your pride, take the job you see, and repeat from inside. So I hope this video um, gives you a little bit of clarity on what we consider a good score. Um, And as I said, it all depends on your goals and what you want uh, once you join. Have a great day. Take care. Goodbye. Bye-bye.